Good day everyone. We will discuss about available G group synchronous primary replica going offline in this video. Let's get started. This is the environment that we are going to use for this particular video. We have two database server JBS AG1 and JBS AG2. JBS AG1 acts as the primary replica and JBS AG2 acts as your secondary replica as far as this always on availability group is concerned. So the commit mode for JBS AG1 and JBS AG2 is always on synchronous replica with automatic failover. When a primary replica goes offline, so let's consider like uh, something happens um, uh, to this particular um, node which is JBS AG1. Uh, and this acts as the primary right now. Let's consider like JBS AG1 kind of uh, goes down. The failover target takes over the primary role, recovers its database, and brings them online as a new primary database. So what happens? As soon as the JBS AG1 goes down, since we have a synchronous replica with automatic failover, JBS AG2 takes over the primary role and recovers all the database. Since we have a listener, what happens is like the application will basically be connecting to uh, uh, JBS AG2 when the always on listener is used in the application connection string. So the former primary replica JBS AG1 when available switches to the secondary role and its databases becomes secondary database. So we have uh, three types of um, uh, uh, failover. Uh, the first one is your automatic failover, uh, which will be like without any data loss. Planned failover um, uh, without data loss. If um, uh, we basically look at um, the things properly and then do a manual failover. So what happens is like, for example, if it is going to be in a synchronous commit and then with a manual failover, we are pretty sure like there will be no uh, data loss. And in case if it is going to be an asynchronous uh, with manual failover, and in case if you are planning for a planned ma manual failover, so what we basically can do is like we can change the commit mode from asynchronous to synchronous make sure uh, the database are synchronized and then we can uh, do a failover and that way there will be no data loss and the third one uh, would be the forced failover with possible data loss so uh, this would be like uh, uh, on the asynchronous commit as far as the force failover is concerned and when we are doing this force failover we will uh, be pretty sure like uh, it is going to have some kind of data loss because we will not be uh, able to understand like uh, what is the status of the availability group when we are initiating this force failover on the secondary. So let's um, look at this particular table here that basically uh, talks about uh, different forms of failover that are supported under uh, different availability and failover mode. So if we look at it here, um, um, uh, uh, we, we are looking at uh, asynchronous commit and then synchronous commit with manual failover and uh, synchronous commit with uh, automatic failover. So as far as the automatic failover is concerned, as far as asynchronous commit is concerned, there is no automatic failover. And synchronous commit with manual failover there is no automatic failover because uh, it is very clearly mentioned like it's a uh, manual failover because uh, when we configure it and if we have configured it for manual failover, it will be manual only. And synchronous commit with automatic failover will definitely have an automatic failover. So as far as the manual failover is concerned, uh, asynchronous commit, uh, basically uh, there is uh, no manual failover. And uh, as far as the synchronous commit with manual failover is concerned, yes, we can uh, perform the manual failover here. And uh, that is applicable for uh, synchronous commit with uh, automatic failover also. And as far as the forced failover is concerned, uh, asynchronous commit, synchronous commit with manual failover, and synchronous commit with automatic failover, all will have uh, forced failover. So the only thing that we need to understand is like as for a synchronous commit with automatic failover, when we perform this uh, forced failover, so what will happen is like, let's consider something happens, um, 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 something happens and it requires a forced failover. And as far as the synchronous commit with automatic failover is concerned, we have discussed the area like for uh, a synchronous secondary, if it goes down and uh, what happens is like um, the synchronous primary will be um, having all those 
exchanges and things like the log blocks that needs to be sent across to the uh, secondary in its transaction log. And now what happens is like, uh, even though it is um, configured as synchronous commit, when the synchronous secondary goes down, it is treated as asynchronous. Now let's consider when uh, this particular um, synchronous commit comes uh, up and uh, it is not um, uh, same as your uh, uh, synchronous primary because it just came up and it needs to um, uh, get the log blocks it needs to open the connection with the primary and get the log blocks and then it will start applying those log blocks into uh, um, uh, into its database but in the meantime let's consider the primary goes down when this is happening and the primary goes down what will happen is like uh, there, even though we have synchronous commit with automatic failure automatic failover will not be possible so what happens is like now when you go for a forced failover in this scenario just I discussed right now even though it is possible there will be some sort of data loss that will be like a good amount of data loss in case uh, you have good amount of data that was uh, happening good amount of changes that was happening on the primary uh, replica so this is something that we need to look at as far as the forced failover with synchronous commit with automatic failover is concerned so uh, what happens is like um, if you basically issue a forced failover command on a synchronized secondary replica, the secondary replica behaves the same as for a manual failover. So that's what will happen. Yep, and um, the automatic failover occurs uh, only under uh, following conditions like a primary and a secondary replica that are both configured for uh, synchronous commit mode uh, and set to automatic failover. If the primary replica is set to manual failover, automatic failover cannot occur even if a secondary replica is set to automatic failover the next uh, condition would be that uh, the windows server failover clustering um, uh, should be having a quorum so basically it should have uh, formed the quorum based upon uh, the uh, votes uh, for each and every nodes and available resources and third condition would be that the primary replica has become unavailable and the failover condition levels defined have been met so these are three conditions that are uh, basically uh, uh, results in um, an automatic failover thank you for watching have a great day jai hind